In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 1, the Apostle Paul writes, But when Cephas, also known as Peter, came to Antioch, I resisted him to the face because he stood condemned. This was one of the darker days of Peter's life. He had acted like a hypocrite, and now he was being called out for it. He was the apostle chosen to first preach Christ to the Gentiles, after which he had convinced his Jewish brethren that this was acceptable to God. However, in his failing, he desired to please men and behaved inconsistently with the truth which he preached. So today I'd like for you to consider with me a few lessons from this account when Paul confronted Peter because he stood condemned. Peter had succumbed to weakness and sin before God. Paul specified the sins of Peter and others with him, stating they walk not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. Sin is a violation of God's law, whether it involves doing something wrong or in simply failing to do what is right. The standard of authority for Peter, Paul, and for us today is the truth of the gospel spoken by Jesus Christ, Colossians 3 and verse 17. It was no comfort that others had joined Peter in his sin, for the road to hell is four-laned and is traveled by many people. But not only did Peter sin, he illustrates that a child of God can so sin as to fall from favor with God. Paul tells us that Peter stood condemned because of his sin. Paul later spoke of others who were severed from Christ and fallen away from grace, Galatians 5 and verse 4. Scripture is too plain on this matter to logically deny the possibility of apostasy. Divine warnings are found in Scripture, like, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall, 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 12. And for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. Hebrews 6, verses 4 through 6. The doctrine of once saved, always saved is simply one that is not taught in the scriptures. Christians do have the ability to fall from grace. But what might have happened to Peter and the others who were unduly influenced by him if Paul had not responded as he did, well, we can only speculate. However, the example of Paul and his willingness to approach Peter teaches us a greatly needed lesson about love for lost souls. We need to view humanity as Jesus did. When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion before them because they were distressed and scattered as sheep not having a shepherd, Matthew 9 and verse 36. This willingness to confront is required in order to encourage one toward a stronger faith, and if necessary, to reprimand one who is overcome in sin to repent. Now it may be easier to remain silent, but doing the easy thing doesn't mesh with our walking in the straight way, Matthew 7 and verse 14. For we're told better is open rebuke than love that is hidden, Proverbs 27 and verse 5. And such concern for the souls of others is to have one's affections and their hearts on a loftier plane than most, being mindful of the things of God. In Galatians 6 and verse 1 says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering yourselves, lest you also be tempted. If Paul had used the tactics of some, he would have talked to everyone else but Peter about his faults. Now friends, this approach is one that is cowardly, it's unloving, it's unproductive, and most importantly, it's unscriptural. There is no concern for another spiritual welfare when all one desires to do is blab sensitive and even incorrect information about them in order to merely pervert a person's image of another. That is why Paul confronted Peter to his face. But why didn't Paul simply take Peter aside privately and rebuke him? Well, it was because of the public nature of Peter's sin. It had adversely affected others, influencing them to be carried away by Peter's hypocrisy, even Barnabas, according to verse 13. But wasn't Paul's actions a violation of what Jesus teaches in Matthew 18 and verse 15? Well, no, it's not. Jesus speaks of matters that are private between two people, which ought to be settled privately. But that doesn't apply to every sin. 
we would do well to remember and to learn from this apostolic example before lashing out and accusing a brother of being unloving when he deals with a public sin in the way that Paul did. Now, there are others who may be influenced by such sin, even an entire congregation, such as we read in 1 Timothy 5 and verse 20. And we should thank God for brethren who are spiritually minded and loving enough to rebuke a public sin publicly. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today, and may God bless you with a wonderful day.